15. I don't know how much. Yeah, but yeah. Now there's a little water running down there. And, and of course, if there's something wrong, uh, you know, they have to, open, if they have to shut down pit one, they don't want water going through their tunnel. And that has right. happened in my lifetime once Just or twice. Just recently. Yeah. They had it, they were cleaning. Yeah, once a year they shut it down and let the water go. Uh, down the falls, all of it, 100 percent, and that is, uh, I, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but you go right there across the Pit River Bridge and Fall River and somehow it becomes public knowledge and these kayakers come. Yeah, yeah. By the hundreds, knowing that there's a full head of water, whoopee! So down, they park right there and get their little kayaks yeah, and yeah. then down they go. Uh, this last year that they did, last summer that they did that, a friend of mine and I, we hiked from uh, up by the Vista Point, uh, hiked down there, and they'll go over that falls time and time again. They get out in the little pool below it before they go under the old abandoned bridge. They grab their kayak yeah. and pack it up the hill and do it again, you yeah, know, and every yeah. time they do, yay! Right. I've heard, <laughs> I've heard actually that for kayakers, that's a big national event. Yeah, yeah Larry, it must that be. used to they run the campground there, it's like, they sure come you know, in all lots these of people would come in, you know, like for, for the, for the uh, whitewater run mm -hmm. down from, you know, from Fall River over the falls and everything like that. So, yeah, that's cool. Fall River? The community service district uh, had has uh, now the right to the falls area on this between Pit River and where the old feed mill used to be. The only thing they have to do is buy out the feed mill property where it burned to the ground. Oh, okay. You know? uh, but that's a potential beautiful site. It's certainly the most historic site in the whole valley. Uh huh. You yeah, know, I yeah. uh, would love to see them yeah. buy it and do something, you know, with community them. Community park. Yeah, community park. Uh, that, that would be nice. Maybe with yeah, a visitor center. Yeah. Now, I have a question for you. Because, um, like, your grandfather came out here in the 1870s. Mm -hmm. When did... Great-grandfather. Great-grandfather. When did Winters come here? 1860s? In the 1860s? I guess. I really don't know that, you know. Uh, uh, the first settlement was right there at the falls. Uh, uh -huh. And that was, uh, they had a gold strike in Wairika. And uh, he set up Lockhart Ferry. A guy named Samuel Lockhart uh -huh. set up a ferry that crossed right there where Fall, where Fall River runs into Pitt River. Just right there. You can still, if you go up Grand Rapids Avenue, to the end, you'll see a turnaround. But uh, if you park there, you can see the remains of an old road that led right around there. You're looking right, I mean, it's a steep, steep hill. You're looking down at the river, and then it swings around, comes right down to the banks of Pitt River between the mouth of Fall River and the head of the canyon. That's where the Winter's Toll Road crossed. And so that, that was for people coming to down. get from Red Bluff, head of navigation on the Sacramento River, to Wairika by horse and wagon. So they would come up this way? They'd come up this way somewhere and they went out through the country, I'm told, to the west of Mount Shasta, or, or to the east of Mount Shasta. Uh -huh. The Sacramento River Canyon was impassable. Okay. And it was so steep and stuff. Right, yeah. This was the only road between Wairika, which had a little gold strike, and Red Bluff. That's hence. And that then was I the guess first people settlement would come up from the way from Susanville and then over to Hat Creek and then up Hat Creek and then cut over here. Cut over here, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, where the road exactly was and where it crossed the mountains to get to Red Bluff, I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't know that aspect. Of it, well, part, that's a kind of an interesting thing because Peter Lassen tried to divert a trail coming from, from here and to go down and to go past where the highway goes, like by Lassen Park, mm -hmm. and like Highway 44, and uh, but he took people over there. He took people over the trail in the winter, and they all died just well, like that was it. His, and it became known as as uh, Lassen's death trail. death trail. Right. Right. His his trail was for for. Uh, you know, across the good old USA, when they leave the right, Mississippi, right. they go across the flats, then they hit the Rocky Mountains. 
his trail swung way to the north somewhere and hit the head of it came across the desert uh, up above Cedarville uh, b above Alturas, above right, Cedarville, right. in uh, there's a place there called Fandango Pass. It's right on the California okay. Oregon border, and that's when you drive go from Surprise Valley, which is Cedarville, up over the mountain to the headwater of the North Fork of the Pitt River. And it kind of followed Pitt River all the way down. It didn't come. It didn't come here. It left the valley floor here, and I don't know exactly where it come, but it got to be known as a kind of a death trail. You know, it didn't right. come uh, into this valley, yeah. but it did, it, it, well, it did. Uh, it came down, all, it followed the Pitt River and crossed it where it's, where it's still pretty small. Pitt River doesn't get to be a big, big river till Fall River Hat Creek. Right, right, most of the water. Yeah, it comes yeah it's from pretty, pretty right little here. bit, you know, and uh, uh, it came, you know, where the Vestal Ranch is? No. Okay, that's, you go out to Pittville and through Pittville on Old Highway Road, you'll come up to a Pitt Canyon Road. You hang right there and you'll come, go way down there, oh, two, three miles, and that's the end of the road. It's kind yeah. of like it's a bad yeah, little it's, valley. It's, you know how it, you got that rocky bluff along the north side of the valley here? It was one place where you could take covered wagons down, right across, uh -huh. across Pitt River, way at the far east side of the valley and out around somewhere dropped off at some point down through Hat Creek and up the other side and down into and come out somewhere near Millville I'm told uh -huh. uh, and then Red Bluff was the head of navigation that's where they wound up uh, Peter Lassen is buried in Susanville yeah yeah that I know by the way my la my wife Linda is a Lassen Oh really? Oh, well, then maybe I better keep my mouth shut. No, see, not sure the, exactly the family connection, but <laughs> you know, Peter Lassen, Danish ancestry. She's her mother was a Lassen, mm. and her grandfather was Danish. So, you know, we figure you know that somewhere or another there might be a connection. She might be. Linda was really excited when we came out here, and she learned about yeah. Peter Lassen in Lassen County and Mount Lassen because she goes, ah, "I'm a Lassen." Lassen Peak is the correct name for that. Lassen now. Peak. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah that's uh, that's so. been going on a hundred years since the great, yeah. maybe it's more than a hundred since the great eruption. Or so now you're four generations. I'm fourth from from Nock. Just tell us from a little bit about the great grandfather. From your great grandfather. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the history of the of the Nock Ranch and D Nock Road. Strict. Uh, okay, that was my grandfather Dietrich, and he was named after uh, Dietrich Merkin, his uncle. Oh, okay. Okay, and and she was the uh, uh, he was the brother of my great grandmother oh. Helena Fred and Helena Friedrich oh. and Helena Knoch uh, that was his her brother Helena's brother that's how it was the little threesome that came right he had a peculiar I never knew him uh, he's buried right there at the Fall River Cemetery and this and is, that was part of the Knox Ranch the Knox family gave that cemetery up the Fall River Town Cemetery that, I mean, I own the property right next to it all the way down. I mean, and in fact, here's a peculiar story. You come along there, coming out of Fall River, headed toward MacArthur. You see the fence. State Highway has a fence that, you know, I mean, you had to give up so much. Comes to the Fall River Cemetery. Goes out 10 feet into the Caltrans right away, down the front of the cemetery where you see that block wall in the arch. In 10 feet, and away it goes. The reason for that was there was a third sound town cemetery where they built Pit One Powerhouse about the time that they're building 299. The second town cemetery, the one they quit the one in the forest uh, up there, it was too damn hard to dig a hole to bury somebody, the one that's in the golf course. The second one was if you go down to the end of Long Street, cross the cattle guard, you go up past the little dam. And then you go around the edge of the lake. Eventually, you come to a big, giant poplar tree where the land peaks out like that. That was part. That was the second town cemetery. Well, they dug them up when they built the pit one thing and buried them in Fall River. And here comes 299. They don't want to have to dig that poor guy up who's buried right next to the fence. You just dug him up two years ago, and now I got to dig him up again. <laughs>
Caltrans in those days turned a blind eye to it. That's why it goes down. But you see the fence, out 10 feet, front of the cemetery, in 10 feet, and away it goes again. You know, the Caltrans right away. Uh -huh. So there's some graves right along the outside of there that had been excavated and reburied. Oh, interesting. And so uh, that's one little story there. Yeah. But that was the, that's the third town cemetery. You know, the first yeah. one exists, the second one they excavated all the graves that they could find. And that, that's where that big, giant poplar tree, you see a kind of little point going out from it, you know. Uh, put it all underwater, you know. To, that was the forebay, what they call the forebay. They call the lake is the forebay. Oh, okay. And used, before they released water, what they would do is at night, they'd let more water, less demand for electricity. All the businesses are closed and everybody's at home in bed asleep kind of thing. They'd let water flow down from the intake into the water and the water level would go up, 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 you know. And then during the daytime, uh, when businesses are open and everybody's up and around, the water would reverse and go through the tunnel to the powerhouse. Give them a little more, uh -huh. give them a little more kilowatt hours that uh -huh. way, you know, the megawatts or whatever they call them from the powerhouse that big. But. Right, right, yeah. Do you, do you know much about a fellow by the name of Frank Baum? Baum Lake, you're talking. And he was Frank one of Baum the that designed all. He designed all. The yeah, things. I don't know anything about the man, okay, but he, right. that's where the name Baum Lake come from. Yeah. I know B A U M. Uh, he's the one that designed, and he was a big shot engineer that right. that built these projects. And yeah, that's he, all I know he, about him. He, uh, <clears throat> he he worked for Pitt, for PG and E. Yeah, mm -hmm. he came up here in the early 1900s. He bought the Crystal Lake Ranch in mm -hmm. 1902. And then he designed pit one through eight. So all these projects you're talking about, like where they put pit one in and all that, he was the designer of all mm. of it. He lived there till nineteen till the nineteen thirties and he was also an inventor. He retired and was a private contractor, consultant, mm. and went all over the world designing hydroelectric plants. But he lived, he had a house right where Crystal Lake flows into Bomb Lake. And he and his wife lived there. And he, he worked on other inventions, and he was working on one of his inventions down in Reading, and he fell out of a window and died. Oh, be darned. And uh, that. that was in the 30s, and <clears throat> so his wife sold the ranch to PG&E in 1939. Hmm. Notice there's no, uh, there's no pit two powerhouse. Original plan was uh, from the tail race at pit one, they were going to build a ton uh, Canal right along and be right under 299 somewhere along. Oh, just when you get to the bottom of that of Pit One grade and cross the flat to Pit River, uh -huh. they were going to take that water and run it over there and run it through a falls. And oh, then, okay. And that's how, the reason it was. It was in the plan. Right. Then somebody right. bombed probably, or some of his engineers said, "We don't need to do that. We, all we have to do is build." Pit three dam a little bit higher, and it's hell of a lot cheaper than digging all the canals and right, tunnels right. and et cetera, et cetera, and it'll give us the same amount yeah, of yeah. power. So that's why pit two. There's no pit two. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I notice it's MacArthur wonder. Bernie Falls State Park. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the MacArthur family, uh, they had their PG&E troubles too. Uh, pg &E had a lot of trouble with a lot of old-time families up here. Uh, 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 my grandfather, I'll get to that in a minute, but MacArthur, they hated pg &E. I mean, they fought and battled it out, this and that. And they owned the property where, uh, where the, the, the Bernie Falls is now. Yeah, yeah. If Bernie fought, if uh, pg &E had had their way, they'd have built the dam so much higher that it would have actually backed water right up the channel and Bernie Falls would have been erased, the falls itself. Wow. It would have been that deep, see? Wow. <laughs> so they gave it, so they sold it to the county, or to the state, with the stipulation that you turn it into a park and you protect those falls. Right. Okay. So I never knew that was the reason why they did it. I knew that the MacArthur family sold uh, the, the 
park area mm -hmm. to um, the state of California you, right. for one dollar. Yeah, that was and why. They, but that they, was the stipulation. Also, right. Is well, they, that they you also, don't let the, you don't let right. you don't do anything with it to PG and E or we're coming after you with lawyers. They, there, they, there also was uh, one other stipulation, which was that free access be granted to the public in perpetuity. Yeah. And that's the reason why you have the back entrance. Because they charge eight dollars to go into the park, but right. they leave one back entrance where you can on hike. Clark Creek Road where you yeah. can hike into it. So where did the MacArthur family come?